This video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. What's up guys, it's Mabo here. In today's video we're gonna talk about the art of travel films and I'm gonna tell you how I plan, shoot and edit my travel videos. Let's go! So for me it all started with a GoPro, just uh, filming some stuff in uh, my holidays. My friends really liked my first GoPro holiday edits, that's what motivated me and got me into filmmaking. I bought my first real camera, the Sony a6000. My first big edit at this time was Cinematic Bangkok. This really went well on YouTube and got like 100,000 clicks and that motivated me to dig even deeper into filmmaking and uh, to start increasing my game. My biggest inspiration at this time were films from Tim Kelly. Until today he is one of my favorite filmmakers. He has just uh, an incredible eye for emotions, feeling, timing. He's producing all his songs in these videos by himself and that's why uh, his videos have such a good symbiosis with music and video. And yeah, from him I really learned that he can make simple things look special and with the sensual style and view on things really inspired me to go out and shoot. Most of you guys will not produce their own music for their videos, but music is really an essential part of a video to make it special and outstanding. And that's where today's sponsor Epidemic Sound comes into play. They have a really high quality library of royalty free music. I love to use their music, uh, it gets updated every day. What's really special about Epidemic Sound is that you can download old stems of a track and really adjust your song to create a unique piece. In addition, they have a big library of sound effects I love to use. Once subscribed, you get a license of all music and all sound effects on the website. Check out the first link in the description and give it a try. Another legendary travel video is the Watchtower of Turkey. If you haven't watched it yet, you definitely have to do it. This just stepped up the game of uh, flow in the video, transitions, uh, shot to shot matching. And yeah, it's just an overall crazy, intense experience. And this really got me to experiment with my camera, not to only stick to the rules, but really play around with the camera, move around, pan, a swipe uh, to get these transitions. To reference a relatively new video, which just stepped up the game again in Russia. It's just crazy how much depth there's in there. So many uh, great shots, it's filmed fully anamorphic and they really put in so much work. Sound design is on another level, just the overall flow and feeling is uh, really impressive. One of my favorite videos of all time. The Russians. First off, I start uh, with a destination, where I want to go, what I want to film. Regarding budget, you also have to take into consideration how much the cost of living is in your preferred country, uh, how much it is to travel. Mostly I book uh, Airbnbs, it's mostly cheaper than uh, hotels and you get a direct contact to a local person living there and renting the Airbnb, which can give you your first uh, contact or information where to go, where to film. And when looking for Airbnbs, you really need to find the right district to avoid long travel distances of the locations we want to film. What I'm also doing before flying is connecting with local people over social media. I'm looking on Instagram, YouTube, I'm looking for people doing similar stuff. Uh, being filmmakers, being creative. They can show you interesting places, recommend you to people, connect you with people. I'm always starting with a selection of songs to get in the mood, um, creating a playlist for bigger projects and just insert potential songs. Um, and while I'm listening to these songs, I'm already getting a little construct in my head, what I want to film, what the mood of the film is, the style, and then I'm taking notes of first shot ideas, um, maybe first story ideas, first voiceover ideas, what equipment I want to use, uh, what lenses to get a little construct before I'm arriving, so I have already a basic idea of the project. 
Reducing equipment and traveling lightweight is really key. A light backpack with only one camera and another lens really gets you further. And I often see myself leaving the big camera backpack at my apartment and just grabbing my camera, um, two lenses and my drone into a backpack uh, with the rest of my stuff. Nowadays, I mostly leave my gimbal at home when traveling. It just takes uh, too much space in my backpack. I did it in the past, but it's just such a hustle to carry it around. And um, I saw myself rarely using it. Um, as you maybe know, I prefer the handheld look and with ultra wide lenses, you can get stable footage. In general, I prefer uh, shooting with primes. There's just a certain look to it uh, because of the uh, big aperture. My favorite travel lens is the 35 mm f1.8. To have some variety, I see myself often using also the 16 to 35 mm to get some variation, some scenery wide angle shots of surroundings, but then switching again when I'm shooting people to the 35 mm which is so light, so convenient, so sharp. Having these two lenses is uh, in 95% of the cases really enough. Having a drone is definitely not a must, but uh, can get you another perspective and makes the edit more complex and gives it more variation. If you're not having a drone, don't worry. In Bangkok and Jakarta, I had no drone, so I just searched for the biggest buildings with the rooftop to get like a um, skyline shot of the city. Shooting time really makes a difference in your edit regarding light. Shooting in the morning or in the evening gives you much softer light, makes your edit more moody and more scenic and is especially more pleasing when shooting people. I had many mornings while traveling uh, to catch a sunrise somewhere with almost none to none sleep, uh, just to catch the sunrise to have the first morning light. You can get up early, shoot the first morning hours, then at midday get some rest when the light is not ideal and then go out again in the evening to catch the golden hour, the blue hour when the light is pleasing again. Regarding transportation, I just use what's available um, if it's a taxi, an Uber or a tuk-tuk in Asian countries. But I always try to use buses and trams as well since there are a lot of great opportunities for street shooting. And what I will definitely recommend you is to just walk, get lost. Since I shot a lot of my best shots uh, when just walking around, going with the flow and exploring the city without having any specific plans. So really frequently asked question was how I shoot people, do I ask them before I shoot them and how do I manage it in general. There's a really great video of Sean Tucker I gonna link you in the description and he really um, digs deep into the topic. Rules in Europe are way stricter than in other countries and people are way more critical to being photographed. In Asia most people really welcome the camera and even ask if they can get a shot. Half of the people I shot in Sri Lanka for example asked me to take a shot of them. I think in general just be friendly, smile, uh, build eye contact with people, see how they react when they see the camera. If I see people are not into it I stop filming them and I don't use the shots. I would never use shots to devalue people or making fun of them. File saving is a really important part which I underestimated in my early years. You should always after each shooting day uh, double save your files on two different hard drives to make sure you're not losing your files. Back in the days I crashed my drone in the mountains and did not save the files from the previous days so not only did I lose my drone but also all other shots taken before. <music> After the shooting part you know what you shot and this might give you a better idea of what direction the edit is going to be. Next thing is a pre-selection and sorting clips. I'm dragging all potential parts of clips into the timeline over the song. When having the pre-selection in the timeline, the great puzzling begins. I'm starting to adapt shots to the song. I'm looking for intro shots, outro shots, middle part shots. I'm building blocks of scenery which go well together. Um, I do shot matching. It's sort of cleaning a messy room and while cleaning it, uh, you get a more and more clearer picture. Having a story, a voiceover, a narrative in the first place obviously helps you uh, with this puzzle since um, some of these shots you created uh, fit only to a certain part of the story. Timing and flow in a travel video is one of the key aspects which uh, make it special. Combined wisely can really create a symbiosis of sound and video which drags the viewer in. Doing these flawless transitions by moving the camera into an object and starting the next shots by moving out of an object. You really have to uh, use these transitions and effects wisely and time 
them on beats so they don't seem to be random and I would recommend you not to overdo certain effects and maybe do them two or three times max in a video so the viewer is not getting bored. So see this way um, all effects used should uh, serve your story and not just be like uh, effect over effect without any meaning. So I would say less is more but by synchronizing movement in a shot with the beat and the music uh, and also sound design can just uh, make an edit really stand out and make it special and make it believable, real and emotional. Regarding fine tuning, I like to do digital zooming, zooming slowly into a scene or slowly out to enhance direction and flow. Zooming in is always to connect shots or to reveal more of a scene and zooming out is used to introduce a new sequence and just going out of the previous one. Another technique to enhance flow and timing is to use speed ramping. I often use speed ramping to connect shots with each other. Speed ramping at the end of both clips just connects them together and increases the flow by going in, going out, going in again. Sound design really completes an edit, it makes it believable, makes it more real, it's really important. If usable I'm using the end camera sound, it's not windy, the um, sound of the a7s3 is pretty good and usable. I'm using epidemic sound, they have a big library of uh, sound effects and also uh, freesound.org. It's a free library of sounds provided by other filmmakers. It does not always have to be realistic sounds or sounds that really were created in this scenery, like I used in uh, the title sequence of Colombo. I used the spinning wheel sound to enhance the feeling of getting dragged into the city. Uh, I started slow and then speed ramp the sound as the drone got further down. And you can really play around, uh, layer different sounds to make the whole scenery even more complex. Regarding color grading, I'm always using my Marble Film LUTs. Um, I made a video on how I color grade. So if you're interested how I color grade my videos with LUTs or without LUTs, uh, there's a link in the description. I'm also always using my grain 35 millimeter or 16 millimeter if I want to have it more uh, grainy, more vintagey. Uh, just depends on the edit, takes out um, a bit more of this digital feel. And yeah, you might know my frames I'm using also on this video around the picture. I think this gives uh, the whole thing another analog vibe and uh, adds a little mood to the whole video feel. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I could inspire you to get out and shoot some travel related videos. Don't forget to check out Epidemic Sound, first link in the description. This is only my approach to planning, shooting and editing a travel film. There are many ways to create something unique. Check out my newest travel film, Cinematic Colombo, if you haven't yet. In about one week I will be releasing Cinematic Sri Lanka. You can follow me on Instagram, I post some behind the scenes stuff and some little edits over there. See you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.